Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on constant rate of change in slope. Our objectives are to find the constant rate of change for a linear relationship and how to find the slope of a line. And before we do that, we need to start off with some key vocabulary. What is a rate of change? Well, a rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another quantity. And a linear relationship is a relationship that has straight line graphs. Think linear, you can see the word line there. And so what is a constant rate of change? This occurs when the rate of change between any two data points in a linear relationship is the same or in other words, constant. So the rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another. A linear relationship is a relationship that has straight line graphs. And you combine the two to help you with constant rate of change. The rate of change between any two data points in a linear relationship is the same or constant. Now let's find the constant rate of change between the quantities in the table. We have hours, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we have feet going negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 18. Well, with our hours from 1 to 2, we can see that we're adding 1. And from 2 to 3, we're adding 1. And from 3 to 4, we're still adding 1. What's taking place with our feet, well, from negative 12 to negative 14, we are subtracting 2. And from negative 14 to negative 16, we're subtracting 2. And once again, from negative 16 to negative 18, we are subtracting 2. Now, when we use rates of change that involve distances and time, hours being our time, feet being our distances, this is almost always written, if you think of miles per hour, a common rate of change, the distance goes on top. So we typically, when we write this as a rate, have our change in distance over our change in time. And so our change in distance in this question was negative 2 feet, and that is written over 1 hour. So we have negative 2 feet over 1 hour, or can also be written as negative 2 feet per hour. Either answer would work. Now the graph shows the amount of money in Yen's savings account each week. Find the constant rate of change, then interpret its meaning. Well, we're given two points on this graph. We're given this point here, that is 120, and we're also given a point right here on the graph, and that is at 480. And what we want to do is take those two points, so 120 
and 480. Now what this 120 really means is helpful to know. It's, not, it's more than just an ordered pair. The 1 represented our weeks and the 20 represented our amount of savings. So this is in one week $20 in savings. Whereas our second ordered pair, 480, is four weeks and $80. Now, our rate of change in this question is going to be expressed as our change in savings over our change in time. Your dependent variable, your amount of savings here, is on the top, whereas your independent variable, your number of weeks, is on the bottom. Now, the change in savings, we could write as 80 minus 20 and put that over 4 minus 1. Well, that gets us 60 over 3, which when simplified is $20 in one week. Now, what does $20 per week really mean? Yen savings account is increasing at a rate of twenty dollars per week is our interpretation of the slope and the rate of change $20 per week. Now one other way you may see this $20 over one week written is $20 slash week to represent $20 per week. So now here we have two key concepts that kind of blend together a bit. We have rate of change and when a rate of change is positive that's an increase where you can see in this first graph, as the time increases, so does the temperature. Whereas on the next graph, we have a negative rate of change, whereas the time increases, the temperature decreases. Or no change is a zero rate of change, whereas the time increases, the temperature does not. So, how does that relate to slope? Well, the slope m of a line passing through the points at x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the ratio of the difference in the y-coordinates to the corresponding difference in x-coordinates. So what you're going to do to find slope and slope in algebra, and well, pre-algebra as well, is always defined by the letter m, and that's going to equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, as long as the two x's are not equal to each other. And we'll get into a few examples of that now. Find the slope of the line. Well, our slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, details matter here. As it says, choosing points, any two points in a line can be chosen as x1, y1, and x2, y2. And also, the coordinates of both points must be used in, in the same order. So, what I always do when solving slope problems is I'll take the two ordered pairs. In this question, 0, 1, and 1, 4. And before I substitute anything into the slope formula, I'll call one of the ordered pairs x1, 
y1 and label it. And I'll call the other ordered pair, if you will, my second ordered pair, x2, y2. So when I go to use the slope formula, I already know exactly where I'm going to put all of my numbers in. For the y2, I'm going to use 4. Minus my y1, I'm going to use the 1. And that's going to go over my x2, I called 1. Minus my x1, which I called 0. And that's the setup. And so now I need to take 4 minus 1, and that is 3, over 1 minus 0 is 1. And so my answer for slope m equals 3, since 3 over 1 just simplifies into 3. So take your two points, label one your first ordered pair, x1, y1, label the other, x2, y2, substitute into the slope formula, make sure you have your integer rules going, and solve. Now what about the slope of this line? We have the points negative 3, 3, and 3, 1. So if we just pick the points, and I'll just take negative 3, 3, and the other ordered pair is 3, 1, and it doesn't technically matter which you call the first ordered pair and which you call the second. I mean, I can call, if you really wanted, this ordered pair x2, y2, and the next one x1, y1. You just have to be consistent as you now substitute into the formula. Once you pick it, go with it. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we called the y2 in this question 3. Our y1 was 1, so 3 minus 1, over our x2 we called negative 3. Our x1 we called 3. And this is where having a really firm grasp on integer rules comes in handy. 3 minus 1 is 2 over negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. And so my slope in simplified form is going to be negative 1 third. And that is my solution. Now our other note here says for slope the vertical change is sometimes called rise while the horizontal change is called run. You can say that slope equals rise over run. And if we use our answer of negative one-third, I could write that in a couple different ways. I could say negative one over three is my rise over run. And I could also write that as one over negative three. And if I look at the graph that's drawn here, if I were to count from this point and go, say, my rise is negative 1. Well, if I go down 1, and then I run 1, 2, 3 to the right, since it's a positive run, I hit the line again. If I do that again, rise negative 1, and run positive 1, 2, 3, I'm again at my line. Now, the neat thing about the 1 over negative 3 what if I start here and I rise a positive 1? Well, running a negative 3 is going backwards, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, I'm still on the line. Same thing, rise a positive 1 and then run negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So oftentimes you will hear slope called rise over run. And the more you actually work with the slope, the more you'll be able to manipulate your answers like negative 1 over 3 versus 1 over negative 3, same slope, but it just shows you different ways you can count on the graph. Now, we do have special slopes. Find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. In our first example here, we have a being negative 3, 
3 and b being 2, 3. Let's call this first ordered pair x1, y1, and the next one x2, y2. And once again, our slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And as I go to substitute these values in, y2 is 3, y1 is 3, x2 is 2, x1 was negative 3. And as I simplify this, 3 minus 3 is 0. 2 minus negative 3 is a positive 5. And 0 over 5, I can just simply write as 0. So what does it mean for a line to have a 0 slope? Well, let's graph these two points on the number line and find out. Our negative 3, positive 3 point is here. Our positive 2, 3 is here. And this was A and B. And if I draw my line connecting the points, we will notice that it's a horizontal line. And in fact, all horizontal lines will have a slope of 0. And if you calculate a slope of 0, it means you have a horizontal line. What about the next one? C is 2, 3, and D is 2, negative 2. Well, let's call the first order pair here, once again, x1, y1, and the next one, x2, y2. Let's start off by writing out our slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And there really aren't any shortcuts here. Write out your formula on every problem. Label your ordered pairs, x1, y1, x2, y2. Go through the process so you don't make silly mistakes. Our y2 is negative 2. Our y1 is 3, so negative 2 minus 3. Over x2 is 2, minus x1 is, well, 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. And 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, somewhere in your mathematical careers, you've learned that you can't divide by zero. It's nothing. And in slope terms, if you try to divide by zero, that's a special word called undefined. So when you calculate slope and your denominator is zero at the end, that means undefined slope. Well, how does that look on a graph? 2, 3 is here, and that's my c. 2, negative 2 is right there, and that's the d. And if I draw a line between these two points, we'll notice that that's a vertical line. And vertical lines have undefined slopes. And when you think about that, if slope is also known as rise over run, how far are you running when you rise? Or how far are you rising when you run? You can't define it in example B. It's undefined. Versus example A, where you have a zero slope, how much are you rising when you run? Well, when I run one point over, my rise is zero. So it's zero over the one, or zero over one. It's zero. Again, versus, well, you can't do it with the undefined. So that's the difference between horizontal and vertical lines with slope. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Vertical lines have an undefined slope. That is it for this lesson on constant rate of change in slope. Good luck.